Okay, let's start off with a winter type scene, or at least one with not quite as much foliage. This is out along, uh, out you know, kind of west of Lake City, and I liked it because it's a nice scene. It's got a road that kind of goes up. It's got the, the rickety old guardrail, and the nice thing was there wasn't a lot of foliage, so I could kind of get a real good look at what things look like. And the first thing that I noticed along the embankment here, and this could be along a railroad track or this road or anything, you can see there's all kinds of deadfall fallen leaves. Here's some fallen trees, I assume. And you can see kind of how a lot of the trees don't really have a whole lot of foliage until they get up higher. Now this one looks like it might have been cut a little bit, maybe because it was overhanging the road. Here's kind of a detailed scene. When you look in, you can see you got a little bit of a, got a little culvert there. It looks like it's plastic. Some mud. Now this was, you know, kind of, in, this you can see there's some snow. So this was I think back in March, but it still gives you a good view. There's a good view looking down, what it looks like, how the trees look. Again, how there's very few branches till they get up higher. And the different varieties. You got some real rough bark, some smooth bark. Here's one that's broken off back here. Here's a look across the road looking down the, the embankment on the other side. I thought it was kind of neat. You got a you got all beat up old barrel there. Then you got some tires. You got a tire here. See this tire there, some more tires. Why are there tires there? How they got there, I have no idea. I like the rocks, how they look. See, you got like, some moss on the rocks. I thought that was kind of neat. But again, just look at all the, how busy it is. Look at all the stuff, all these vines, and imagine all this with foliage. So how do you do that? How do you model this and make it look uh, realistic? Here's another view looking down, you can see all the fallen trees. One thing, there are way more fallen trees and branches and stumps and stuff than you'd ever, ever usually see on our model railroads. Everywhere. And again, the trees, uh, the rocks, and some moss. There's a little tire over there. I'm not sure what that is. Is it a buried old lawnmower or <laughs> what? There it is again. Yeah, see that there? And then you got a little water bottle next to it. And then you can see some of the rocks. And all the fallen leaves. There's some more fallen you know, uh, trees, tree pieces over there, tree branches, tree stems. Look at it all. There's a little view down there. Just imagine trying to model all that, and all the vines that are there. There's like almost turning around from where that last photograph was. They're looking back up again this hill, that embankment there. Again, you can see the fallen, you know, the tree armatures there, the trunks. There's another similar view. And one thing I noticed, again, if you look at, start looking through these, there's a lot of trees have double, double trunks or triple. If you look through it, you'll start seeing some of that. And again, here, here's something that's, that's fallen down. There's one that's fallen down. One here that's fallen down. That's a nice view, just kind of up in between all the trees. What you see is like a broken off trunk there, fallen stuff here. More fallen stuff all the way up the embankment there. It's all fallen. There's a piece over there falling down. Incredible. How do, how do we do this? I don't know why that's there. It's just a piece of concrete. Maybe it's part of the culvert system, the drainage system. I don't know. It was just, just there. There's a view looking down the hill. You can you kind of see, again, one thing I notice is all the, the fallen leaves that are there. Another view looking down the hill. Uh, if you're looking up the hill, and again, see all the fallen tree trunks, tree, 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 <laughs> everywhere. Similar view to, to the last one. That's looking over the other side. I, I like this just because of the, the detail. You can see on that fallen trunk there how that looks. It looks kind of neat. But look at all the, there's way more than that fallen in there. There's more down there, and there's some back there. Oh, man, how are we going to model this? What in the world is this? <laughs> Oh, Lord, how are you going to do that? I do like that, though, for the the detail on that with the, that fallen, I don't know if we call it a trunk or a branch, but how it's got the moss on it. I thought that looked kind of neat. Another view of that. Look, there's a plastic shopping bag down there. There's another water bottle over there. Again, I think our layouts are never quite as messy as the real world. There's another fallen one with some neat looking bark or some uh, moss on it again. There's, look at that tangled mess, you know, <laughs> some, I don't know if they're vines or, oh, I mean, just imagine that's all green, what that's going to look like. 
Here's the detail, a little electrical box just kind of sitting out there by itself. Here's another closer view of it there. Now I'm walking back down toward my van here. Okay, some dirt on the side and, you know, tire tracks. That's obviously where I pulled in on this particular day. A view just of a tree. This is the top of a culvert that I thought was pretty neat. Just because this stream is kind of like, to me, just kind of came out of nowhere. And then this is the top of the culvert and there's this little... That's kind of cool. That's a neat little detail he gets to add. I'm not sure if that's for flood control or if you can close that culvert off or, or what that's for. And then what I wanted to do, just to kind of finish this up, I, just, I had these in a different uh, folder because of the different camera. Very similar. There's some more pictures again looking down. Look at that. Look at that mess. <laughs> looking down the side of that hill. I mean, just look at that. I and mean, how, how in the world do you ever take the time to model something like that? Incredible. There's the stream. And again, look at all the detail and all the... Ugh. That's a view up the hill. There's a culvert coming out. Some runoff. There's a little Pennsylvania game land sign on the tree. Oh, so one fell down there. And there's one on the tree. That's the stream that goes to that culvert. You'll see that coming up. You see it's just kind of like, where's it go? I don't know. It just disappears. But look at all the fallen trees and all the junk and stuff laying down on the ground more look at that. look at all that look at all that you need millions of dollars worth of ground deadfall and groundfall look at that looking that's a neat looking I don't know what happened to that but that looks pretty cool that's just a mess that's just more there I want to get back to there's the, so there's the culvert from the other side so you can kind of see what that looks like that looks kind of neat pretty good size again there's that uh, Handle. I don't know what that controls. I, I, don't, I didn't, you know, crawl down in there. It was a little bit wet that day to look and see if there's actually some type of gate valve or something like that in there that actually closes off or, or what that might be. I'm not sure. So, and there's a little bit of a closer. The water was actually running pretty good that day, but you can kind of see what the water looks like. And that's the stream. It just kind of goes, woo, and where does it go? I don't know. You know, we worry a lot on our layouts. Well, it has to have a, a logical path, and it does. But look at a scene like this, where that just comes out of, what, you imagine this is kind of back against the edge of the, of the wall, or the backdrop of your layout, and I don't see the stream going into the backdrop, you know what I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, how would I, how would I make, replicate this in, on a layout, so I thought that was kind of neat. Alright, quick pause here, let me uh, pull up some other pictures, and we'll keep looking. Okay, here's a bunch of photos from the embankment over by the bridge that we're modeling, uh, we've, we've talked about this before. And what, what I just want to show here is just this is some winter scenes of the embankment and kind of how it looks. Again, how gnarly things look along the embankment. And I wanted to show what I did here at the bottom. I actually pulled up very, very similar. This is the winter scene. And you can see it looks like there's some railroad ties in there along the embankment. Some fallen you know, tree parts, branches, trunks. It's a mess. You got something here. You got look, look, an old skid in here behind the behind these sheds. It's kind of neat. There's a there's a there's a skid there. There's a skid there. And I saw this here. I couldn't tell if it's an old picnic table. I I don't know. It might just be some boards laying in there. But look at that mess. Look at look at that. Again, tell me how you're gonna model that. Now, what's interesting, almost the same view. Is that not exactly the same, but very very similar. Obviously different. See more in the springtime. These are taken in late May. There's the uh, there's the skid up there, but just look how it's changed in terms of the greenery and the different types of greenery and the different types of foliage. You can still see some of this scraggly stuff in through here, but it, it just looks it's really interesting to just kind of compare the two from about a March time frame on that photograph and late May on this photograph. I thought that was kind of cool. And then looking at the embankment itself, I do have a couple here with a choo-choo. More just to show kind of the scale of things. So here's uh, NS train 287 westbound here. Just come through uh, Wallace Junction. Look how the trees are. Look at how tall they are. And then look along the embankment. Again, kind of how rough and scraggly and, and interesting it looks on both sides of it. And then he just comes along and you can see all the different... Huh. Again, I don't know how to effectively model that. I really don't. 
Um, this kind of gives a good view of kind of the, of the scale of what these are auto racks, so you can kind of get a feel for how tall they are, you know how that looks. And if you look the other direction from the same bridge, this just shows again some of the okay. This how you gonna model that kind of stuff there? I don't know maybe with, with the teddy bear fur, but you can see it's got like different heights and, and then it's got some other grass here. It's got some of these wild looking just like, like little twig things sticking up there. There it shows the track, the old, that's the old, I guess the old nickel plate telegraph line. This is, gonna, this is kinda neat, this one pole right here has an additional support to it. So you can see what that scene looks like and kinda how the, how the ballast then moves into the, the vegetation. The Elk Creek trestle is right around the bend here. Elk Creek is right up through here. And this is just where it comes across the trestle. This was now look down again. Look at all this the scruffier stuff there. And there, there's a manhole cover, or a manhole. You know, I don't know what what in the world that goes to, but that's definitely what it is. That's kind of neat. Now when this gets a really green, I don't know if you'd even see that. And then down here, you notice. Look at this. Here's a looks like a plastic you know drinking bottle. There, this plastic bottle over here. <laughs> That's kind of stuff again. If you want to be realistic, you got uh, here comes uh, NS206 coming eastbound. Just kind of the view again there of uh, looking at the other way, just to get a choo choo in there. And then that's what the embankment looks like looking the other way. Now these aren't double stacks, but you can, again you can kind of I took this more for the just to kind of get a, get a feel of. It's almost like a tunnel of trees going through there. I thought it was kind of neat. So that's the location at Wallace. Let's take a quick pause and we'll take a look at um, some trees in Lake City. Again, kind of showing the the summer, the summer-ish spring, and, and a winter scene. Okay, here's my photographs of Lake City. Uh, I have a lot of diff different detail photographs, which I also like taking. There's all kinds of details when you're out looking around. Again, a lot of us ought to go out, especially model railroaders. Take your camera. Don't take a picture of a train. Just take a picture of the details. It'll really do you well. Now this here is the one park scene that I'm going to try to somewhat fit. There's the restaurant that I've talked about being in Lake City. There's a little gazebo. That, and you know this restaurant, the station there, and this gazebo up high scratch build. I got this more to kind of show the trees. Now these are three individual trees. So it's not quite a, a big tangled mess. But there they look in the winter time. I wanted to get a picture, kind of see how they look with the uh, trunk and branches look like and that is almost not exactly almost the same scene now uh, again this is uh, late in May and you can see how they've kind of greened up how the foliage looks how the park looks I just thought it was kind of interesting to compare what, what there in the winter to there in the let's call it late spring and again how tall they are these, these are big trees uh, they really dwarf a train that would go by. They're probably, I don't know how tall they are, 80 foot, 90 foot. They're, they're big. I didn't measure them, obviously. But uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting to see what things look like there. And, and again, if you're going to, you know, you're not going to buy a tree like this from Woodland Scenics or, or anybody. You're going to have to make something like that. So I took these to see. Look at that tree. I have a lot of more pictures of these trees uh, for modeling them. But just look how they, they just look so cool. And other, other, you know, details from the scene, you got the little electric meter here. Obviously, these the smaller uh, evergreen types of things. You got some benches here, benches here, garbage cans and stuff. Really neat. So I thought that was kind of cool. And that's what I'm going to, this is where, this is the lake scene, lake city scene that we're going to try to have on our layout. Going from there, uh, the road crossing over to the station and whatnot. And here's, you know, I have a lot of different pictures of the road crossing and all the different details. Obviously, there you go. Thank you, Mr. CSX, for telling me not to trespass. But then there's all kinds of different signs and things that are around. There's the park from the other side. But all these different signs that you, you tend to see. And one of the things I noticed, obviously, is the road signs. That is all the electric wires, the lights on the on the poles and everything. If you're going to do all that, wow. Um, whew, good luck, Rob, trying to get that done. But we will try. That's what I want to do. Details of the crossing. The sidewalk, how it ends, has this nice little grate here. So, okay. I'm getting away from scenery, so let's get back. I have uh, one more thing I want to show, um, which is over in uh, Hudson, Ohio, on the Norfolk Southern. All right, this scene here I like. This is over on the Norfolk Southern. 
Hudson, Ohio, um, just south of Hudson, Ohio. I don't know if it's the Fort Wayne line or the Cleveland line, but anyway, this is the embankment scene there. This is the little, uh, I think it's Colony Park. This is a little pedestrian bridge that goes over it. Uh, down this way is toward Alliance, Ravenna, Al Ravenna, then Alliance, then Pittsburgh. Behind us, uh, it would be up toward Cleveland. But this is a nice embankment scene that I like, and you can see kind of how how densely foliated it is. I like the way the tracks you know, are, are elevated. you got water on both sides. Up here, there is an industrial spur that goes off up there and a little, little uh, utility shed. So I thought that was kind of neat. And then I tried to get two scenes again of the winter and of the, the spring. This is back almost, there's the switch, so there's the industrial track there. You can see the embankment, you can see the water again on both sides, and see how it's kind of not quite as grown in, but you still can see kind of the, the twigs or the, the bare branches, the bare trunks of those little guys. And then almost the same view, again, not perfectly, but that is the same view here at the train. Again, more toward, this I think was taken back in this last summer when I was there. You can see how that, uh, the area's got green here, it's grown in. Again, some of those you know, smaller looking branches must have been these other type of shrubs growing up along here. So I thought, and it's still water, so you can see there's still water on both sides here. And this is just a real neat area to get real good detailed photographs of what the foliage looks like uh, from that bridge. Even here, you can see it's just it's just a it's just a mess. <laughs> I mean, in a good way, it looks cool, but I don't know how to replicate this accurately. You know, yeah, okay, I got some filigrane boucha from Sil Floor, and maybe use some cocoa, whatever, and you know, the teddy bear fur. Yeah, that's all great. But how in the world do you make this look like this? I mean, look at that. So that's that's the view from the other side. How do you do that? You know, maybe this could be horse tear foliage. I don't know. And again, this isn't probably all greened up yet because this was um, back in the early spring. And there's a view looking down. Again, there's kind of the, the it's a marshy, it's kind of wet down there. You got some, what are the reeds? I don't know what they are, but you can see how that looks. It's just, I, I don't know how to duplicate that. And this is right along the railroad track. So this is the kind of the scene that I was hoping to, you know, to, to duplicate on the layout. Just not sure how in the world to do it. I really don't know how. All right, one more, uh, or a couple more stops, and uh, over by us, and we'll uh, take a look at some more uh, foliage. All right, this here is the, uh, if you recognize that, that's the the abutment from the underpass that I modeled on the layout. This is obviously pretty greened up, and you can see how dense it is with different types of foliage. I, I've nowhere near. Look at that. I've nowhere near that much. I got a couple you know, filigrane busha and some stuff stuck in and say, yay, look at me, I'm doing scenery, but look at that. How in the world do you effectively get to that level of detail? This is from above. I took a quick little jaunt up there and to some of the nice little, you got some concrete blocks here I think are kind of neat. You got a speed sign, 70 over 60, I think for passenger and freight. And if you zoom in, you kind of see you got some utility boxes, mile markers, more concrete stuff there. I saw it was kind of cool. Uh, this is the view. I took this because I wanted to see what, what's a road look like. And we're usually we're, you know, down at ground level. That's kind of what, what the road looks like, what the texture of it should look like from up above. I'm not sure that's exactly the view if you're looking at a layout, but I like that. I like to look and see how the, you know, how the dirt portion of it comes out, how it, how it matches in with the, with the foliage and the vegetation on the side. How it comes, you said this is actually going down a little bit over to the field. I just thought that was kind of neat. And that's one that's just overly saturated just for fun, I guess. <clears throat> that's the field. That's looking, uh, again, that's the signal bridge that we're modeling on uh, on the layout. That's at uh, QD 103 on the CSX. And this just shows the embankment. That's the embankment across the road. Again, look at that. That's not ground foam, folks. That's not clump foliage. That's all vertical somehow. God, I don't know exactly how. Okay, here's the embankment. And I did this because I wanted to have kind of a scale of the, of the train coming by. You can see how it looks with the with the trees there. There it is going over that bridge. And, and you can see this tree, which is on the hill here, actually does even go over the, over the train. And then there's the embankment on the other side that I probably would try to model it. It's, it's a big curve on the layout, but I probably would try to model it. But look at that. Look at how dense that is and how, uh, how do you do that?
I, I just look at that and go, I give up. I'm going to take up uh, basket weaving or something. So there's the, there's the rail car. You can see kind of the scale, how the trees are, are above it there on that embankment side. And that's the overall scene. If you recognize that, that's the bridge that I modeled. Now I have a road coming down from this side, so it isn't exactly the same. And this tree right here is the one that I used, the, uh, the uh, commercial knock tree. Because it was close. It wasn't perfect, but it was close. So that's the scene that I tried to duplicate. And you can see there's some more detail stuff there. You got you know you got poles everywhere. You you really got to go out and look and take photographs. There is so much detail out there. Here's some of the like I don't know what these are. Some type of foliage. This is all in the same area. That's a field that's up a little bit little ways, and then the more of these. These are these are about 12 feet tall, just kind of growing up out of the ground there. Again, there's a messy looking some foliage. There's a tree. There's my van. Again, I wanted to kind of get a look. If I'm going to, you know, scratch build trees, what do the are? What does the trunk and the branches look like? It's like kind of cool to see that kind of stuff. Some more trees back there, and there's a scene with some trees, all kind of not super dense, but you know, look at that. I never would have thought a tree would kind of come up and like this, and this goes look, and this way, this goes this way. It's just it's just so neat to see photographs of of actual trees. All right, let's go back and look at an embankment um, over on the CSX. Okay, this is the Route 5 bridge over the CSX, west of Lake City. Nice spot to go out and, if you don't mind, it's a little bit of traffic to get some photographs from above. And you can see again, here's the embankment, more toward the, the uh, late winter, very early spring. But again, some of the details you notice, you, know, you got this type of little barricade down here you got the, the newer milepost signs and an older one there and the tracks and again, I like to see this kind of stuff to see how they did this was a four track main line obviously well I'm sorry I mean you didn't know that it was a four track main line and it's kind of we're going to see how it looks from this perspective of a uh, look at the layout again there's the dense foliage going back from the side of the railroad tracks and how you do that I don't know this is the other side there the tracks this is a bunch of trees and it goes right over to a field over here. Nice area. It's real nice and kind of peaceful out here. This picture I kind of, this is like probably my favorite picture. If I had to show one, it says, here's what I want my layout to look like. It would be this. How in the world, again, you're going to be tired of me saying, how in the world do you get to this level of detail with your scenery? I really don't know. I mean, starting from all the stuff down here, all the different foliage, the trees. This just looks so cool. I really want my layout to look like this. I can't say I'm going to get there, but this one picture really, really, to me, is the epitome of what I want my layout to look like when it comes to scenery. I'm definitely more of a scenery guy as opposed to uh, even operation and, other, and, and you know detail and stuff. I, mean, I like to detail cars and do painting and weather, and I will, but scenery is my, my favorite part. So there's the view, and I kind of included this just to... Again, give you a perspective. There's an auto rack train. You can see kind of how tall the trees are going around it. You know, again, trees definitely have to be, don't have to be, but a lot of them are definitely, I think, taller than we think. That's probably, what, two, two auto racks high or so, <laughs> something like that. And that's the scene looking from the bridge just down to the edge of the, of the woods there. Oh, that was a, a neat-looking tree right there. There's a sign on that tree there. That's off the field. So that's that area there, and let me take one more stop, and uh, then we'll wrap this up. All right, this is a location. This is west of CP97 on the CSX, and again, you can see this has got some a field, some scruffier grass. I don't know, maybe that could be done with the teddy bear fur, and then this type of gnarly stuff that I don't, maybe could be horsetail or something like that, then the trees, so... Yeah, I look at that and I go, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? <clears throat> There's a view, again, looking kind of at the at the trees there. I was going to buzz through these. There's a tree. I like that tree. Again, you can kind of see the, the branch or the trunk and then branch structure on the tree. It's got a vine growing up through the tree itself. I just like to use these as reference for eventually when I start making trees, but the, there's a view. There's so long. The, 
Uh, how do you do that? Look at the different textures and variety and, and the different leaves and, and weeds and and all that stuff. I just get so frustrated looking at that and saying, how am I going to do it? And in all honesty, you probably can't. I don't think there's any way, well, I guess you could if you're really nuts, but that you're going to really be able to do that to that level of detail. So there's going to be some compromise made. But again, look at all the different weeds and stuff like that. I just think it's cool when you go out and really look at this stuff. There's different varieties of stuff. I think there's a little, little uh, footbridge there across a real small stream that runs along here. There's some tree. I like this tree. Look at the, the detail, the texture on that tree. Now it's kind of leaning a little bit. I thought that's kind of neat. There's that tree overall. Some more trees along the won't bore you with all kinds of pictures of trees. This is the edge of the wooded area. That's the NS there coming by. Uh, and some neat details. Again, just uh, here's the crossing. What I think is cool about this, so you got the little, you know, obviously the, the relay shed there for the crossing itself, the old abandoned nickel plate telegraph line. And you got these things. These, I guess these are like natural gas or fiber optic, I don't know, a little electric box little something there on that pole and this doodad here which I don't know what in the world that is I think I would have to take a picture of that later on and this is along the tracks here again look how do you how do you do that how do you effectively model something like that there's a good view along the railroad track just right along the tracks just normal train tracks running and how do you do all that I don't know but again, that's what I'm trying to think about. And there's a good scene where it starts off kind of low, even from these little, uh, what little tufts of grass down here, to some of the higher foliage here, vegetation, and some of some trees, and all kinds of neat-looking stuff going on there. I just think it's really, really interesting when you actually go out, really look at stuff, and take real serious photographs, and try to figure out how you're going to model it. I just, I don't know. I did like that tree. That's a pretty cool looking. It's actually a tree, and it actually had, the reason I took the picture was it actually has like a vine. Because see this foliage is different for an evergreen tree. It has like a vine growing up through it. I just thought it was neat. And some stuff that you might not, might not always see on our layouts. I, I like that tree. Again, there's the NS going behind it. And again, that's a pretty darn tall tree. I'm not sure the, the, but if you think a locomotive is going to be about here or so. You know, that's four or five locomotive stacked on each other. How high would that be? I don't know. There's a big, big tree there. I think these are just some reference photos I took. There's that other location. And I looked at that and I just thought, teddy bear fur. Maybe that would work for that. Um, you know, painted it kind of that straw type color with some green intermixed into it. Maybe that would work for that, an area like that along the railroad tracks. Here's the, 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 I'm at a road crossing, don't panic, uh, but there's a scene there, you can see the different, I, I, again, it's so, so involved, there's a view from the other side of the railroad tracks, looking into the different trees and stuff, I think it's really, really cool, there's the uh, slight embankment along the railroad track, this is more in the summertime, but again, this might be a candidate, perhaps, for some of that teddy bear fur type stuff, to uh, to model that, but then you've got all kinds of different varieties of of weeds growing up in there. I like the way the, you know, the, the dirt path works here. This is the Fairview Nursery over here. So this, this uh, path is used by the nursery people to get back into it. So, All right, one more stop, then I promise we'll wrap this up. Okay, another view that I used to, to do some reference. This is uh, over by me. This is Toe Road, uh, right, right near where I live. CSX tracks here. Obviously, wintertime. Trees are bare. I wanted to get pictures to see what the trees look like. And you can actually count the trees that are in there. And almost the exact same view as this is that. Obviously springtime. But now you can see, I look at that, I go, I, how, many, how many trees are there? I, I, I don't, well, I, I, I don't, I don't know. And are the trees, is the foliage on the trees down that low? Well, no, it's not. And you can see, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you, you can actually count the trees here and see what it looks like. So... All that stuff that's down here at the ground must be other types of vegetation that's in there. 
and then these trees get real nice and big and puffy and you know, there, there's the that telephone pole or power line there which is just out of the view here so it's almost the same location so again you know how do you how do you get this realistic on your layout I I want to work at it I want I want to get there I, I just don't know how to do it um, you know you can make trees you can buy trees you can do all you want but to make it to pull it together something like this is is to me the challenge and make it look realistic and, and, and look proper so all right final thoughts coming up okay I'm gonna leave it here with my favorite picture as we mentioned before and just say that no more I won't, I won't do any more videos on trees until I have something to actually show uh, you know how I did it how I modeled it how I get to this point if I can ever get anywhere near this right here which I really I uh, think it would just look so cool if someone could do this on their layout. Um, I'll think about it over the summer. I will start making trees. I need to think about how to tie a scene like this together because I honestly don't know. It's a lot more detailed, a lot more busy, a lot more complicated than I thought until I started going out and actually taking pictures and looking and observing the, you know, the world around us out there by the railroad and what I want it to do and all the different details you can add to it. It's going to be a challenge. It definitely is going to be a challenge, but I'm going to try. The only thing I think that to do something like this might need to be done in stages where you get some scenery up enough. Because, again, you know, you want to run trains, right? That's why we have a freaking layout. If I just want to do scenery, I just make a freaking diorama. But uh, you get some scenery up, you get enough, maybe you get a couple trees in. Then over time, come back and maybe square foot at a time or a section at a time, detail it to, the, to this level that's shown here. Because this, this is not going to happen overnight. This will take a lot of work. So that's what I'm thinking about, you know, how I'm going to get to that point. I just want to kind of throw up a, a, a kind of a rambling video here, I know. But like I said, this will be the last one I do until I can actually show some progress on the layout. But uh, I'd love to see some thoughts, comments from people. And, and if anyone's done something like this and actually model, even, even just a diorama, uh, let's see it, man. I'd love to see it. I really would like to see how other folks have done this, the techniques they used, the materials they used to generate a scene like this. I, I want to do it. I'm a little bit of a loss right now. A little bit overwhelmed how to pull it off. But I think maybe by going, like I said, in stages, get some scenery up, make it look decent, acceptable, and then come back and super detail the layout as uh, as you have more time. And uh, you'll learn some more and try some more techniques and whatnot. So, all right, that wraps it up. That is the uh, thoughts on trees and not just trees, but trees and foliage and vegetation and shrubs and everything uh, this you know this this update kind of or this uh, video kind of concludes the last three or so where we talked about trackside vegetation trees and then kind of a prototype what this video was kind of a prototype overview of of, of how things really look and what I want to get to so more to come uh, we'll keep plugging away I got a lot to think about here over the summer as I'm uh, I guess I'm going on this on-site job but I got uh, some time to work on trees and and get a game plan, a plan of attack for the, for the fall when I get back and hopefully make my layout look just like this.